So this talk is called uh, Security as a Process, but also just plugging in a computer is apparently a process as well. So I'm sorry for uh, the delayed start here. I'll, I'll try and maybe go fast so we'll have enough time. So I've been working with WordPress for uh, about 13 years now, which is a really long time. It's, about a, it's more than a third of my life. And one of my focuses over the years has been security. Uh, but I'd like to start with uh, a little game to kind of break the ice. So we're going to play two truths and a lie. I'm going to tell you uh, three things. Two of them will be true. One of them will be false. So first, I discovered a major WordPress security issue while auditing code in my head in a church. Okay, that's one. Two is I disclosed a uh, major security issue to a web host, and which caused them to accidentally take down their entire network with a fix. And three is my first commit to WordPress contained a security flaw. So let's, let's have a show of hands. Uh, who thinks it's the church one? OK, how about uh, the taking down a blog host? More for that one. And who thinks my first uh, commit to uh, WordPress contained a security flaw is the lie? OK. And, and who uh, didn't raise their hand because you think, like, you know, I'm just not the sort of person who raises a hand? But now that, I'm, now that I'm calling you out and recognizing that you exist as a person, you suddenly feel this swelling urge to like, raise your hand for the first time ever. OK, yep, you're out there. OK, you, you people who didn't answer, you're actually right. Because all, all three of those things are true. And uh, yeah, the lie was that there were just two of them. So, <laughs> so, um, so if that uh, minor deception makes you feel uh, vaguely annoyed and distrustful, Welcome to the security mindset. So this is what I'm talking about today. The mindset that you should have as you are coding and deploying sites and, and working with web applications. And uh, it's, uh, it's a mindset that uh, allows you to treat security as a process that is integrated into all aspects of your development. First thing you need to do is stop thinking about security as a destination, as a place, uh, as like a, something you arrive at. Like we are now finally secure. It's not like you know step seven, make our code secure. We're done. Um, sure, like uh, in my consulting, I have a lot of people hand me code, and I have to review it and say, okay, it looks good, or here are some issues that you could fix. But really, no real world code can ever be said uh, to be completely secure. Even if a given piece of code is secure in, in a moment in time, tech is not static. This is all changing. The compiler that the code runs on could change in a way that changes how that code works. A new web server could come along that changes everything. Web browsers could add new features, and suddenly markup that was, was OK is now uh, insecure and has uh, implications. Uh, so as an example, take uh, something like clickjacking. Who's ever heard of clickjacking? Yeah, it's a catchy name, right? I like it. So it used to be fine um, to allow your web page to be embedded in another one in an iframe. Once browsers got the ability to use CSS to make uh, anything transparent, including an iframe, you could have a situation like this. This is a completely legit site. Uh, because it's you know, VeriSign trusted and uh, Oprah approved. So this is a fine site. And then we have an iframe embedded, which is Justin Bieber's Facebook page with a like button. So you would know, like, if you click that, what you were doing. You'd be liking his page. But since you can use CSS to style iframes, you can do something like this. So now when you click that button, you're not getting an iPad. You're liking Justin Bieber's page which is fine as long as you know what you're doing. So don't think of security as a destination. Think of it as a process by which you apply a security mindset to every step of the process. I want you to think as you're coding and as you're designing features, how could this go wrong? How could uh, data be harmful? How could it be transformed to be harmful? How could it be harmful when combined with other data? How could someone use their access maliciously to cause harm? What would happen if someone sent a request on behalf of a user who's allowed to do something and sort of tricks them into doing it? There's a Japanese term called uh, pokeyoke, 
which roughly translates to mistake proofing. And I believe it's popularized by uh, Toyota many, many decades ago in their manufacturing process. And has all the implications uh, for design, especially UI and UX. So like, you know, you have a, a form field for your age, like you can't enter a negative number there. Stop them before they do that. Uh, but this, uh, uh, this idea also has uh, implications for the design of your coding interfaces. So if a certain type of data is going to cause a problem throwing through your, flowing through your application, don't let it get there in the first place. Just stop that mistake before it happens. You should trust no one. This is uh, terrible life advice, but is really good security advice. So when you're putting on your coder hat, just be thinking that you know, don't trust the people that wrote the code you depend on, who wrote the web server that you run on. Uh, you know, WordPress core, the, the plugins you may be using. And don't trust the people who use your code, that they're gonna always use it in the, you know, angelic way that you imagine them using it. Uh, it's kind of like an anti-John Lennon stance, just imagine all the people being really terrible. <laughs> um, and just assume, if someone can do something that causes harm, assume that they will. And it's your job to write code uh, that remains secure even when everyone is being their worst self. When I said no one, I mean no one. You can't even trust yourself. So who thinks uh, that they're a better coder now than they were two years ago? All right, hopefully you're not getting worse. <laughs> Actually, does anyone think they've gotten worse? Okay. <laughs> Usually I thought we'd have one troll. So, um, the code that you wrote two years ago was written by a worse coder, even though it was you. It was a worse version of you, and you should not trust that person. And even the cur current version of you is going to make mistakes. So you should design your code so that it is harder for you uh, to make security mistakes. And you should integrate that security mindset into your coding to enable that. So it's not something that you do later, like when you're done writing the application, you say, okay, let's go through and, and security proof this. Uh, this is something that should start with your first line of code and continue through the process. So what does that look like, practically? Um, so for example, uh, intent is a thing uh, that a lot, not a lot of people consider. Uh, certainly you'd have to check to make sure someone is allowed to do something, which is permissions, um, so you do something like current user can to validate that, uh, make sure they have a certain capability. Uh, but less obvious is that you need to validate a user's intent. So if, if anyone has ever used uh, Siri or the Amazon one, whose name I will not mention because there are people on the live stream at home, <laughs> and I don't want to purchase a dollhouse for them or something by mistake, you're probably familiar with accidentally ordering something or, or uh, calling the wrong person or something like that. Uh, so, I mean, this is something that you were allowed to do, but you didn't really intend to do. And the same is true uh, when you're working with a web application. I may be allowed to delete a post, which may be like a form submission that says like action equals delete post, uh, post ID equals one, two, three. Um, but if someone can submit that, make me submit that request and delete that post without me intending to, that, that's a security issue. So we have functions like WP nonce field, and WP verify nonce that allows you to make sure that uh, the request from a logged in user is, is actually intended. And so you would use the first one in the form field to generate a, a token that is unique to them and to the action that they want to do. So like for deleting post 123 for user ID 4, this is a unique string. And on the other end, you verify it with WP verify nonce. And if that, if that uh, field, if that token does not uh, validate, then potentially someone is trying to trick me into doing that action. Next, um, you should make sure that the code or the uh, data that flows through your code is aggressively sanitized. So if something should be an integer, uh, make sure it's an integer. Don't just assume that it is going to be just because all the code that you wrote you know, uh, uh, like whenever you use it, you supply an integer, but there are pathways that data can flow in that you may not uh, anticipate. So you should make sure that your code uh, uh, ensures that. 
So many issues uh, are just due to weird data showing up where it uh, shouldn't show up. I'm a big proponent of sanitizing both on the way uh, in to storage, like a database, and on the way out. Uh, so for example, let's take this code. Right, we have set ID and get ID. And with both of them, I'm casting to an integer. So in the first one, as I update the option, I, make, I cast it to an integer. And on the way out, I cast it before I return it. And also, the second argument there is a, a default argument. So it's 0 if it's not set. So my certainty when I use these methods is 100% that I'm going to get an integer when I use them. And if you're using PHP 7, which uh, I recommend you look into for code that does not need to be widely distributed, so this is for private code for a client or something like that, um, PHP 7 is great just for speed reasons. But you can also do things like uh, uh, enforce this at a lower level, so have type declarations right there in your function uh, definition and in the return. So the first one says int ID it will uh, expect an integer. And it will also do friendly things like uh, if you pass in 1, 2, 3 as a string, it will cast it to an integer, just like the, the previous example did. And then the, for the second one, get ID, the colon int says that it should return an int, and uh, it'll, it will do the same thing. WordPress also has helpful functions that you can use uh, to sanitize common things. Here's a bunch of them. And there's also a filter that you can use to apply to all gets and sets of an option. So that example that I showed before, you can do something like this. So it's just sanitize option and then underscore the name of your option. So this ensures that even if someone like a third party is extending your code and they are uh, calling get option directly, this filter will still be on it, so they will get the data that they expect. The best way to enforce all this sanitization throughout your code base is the uh, DRY principle. Don't repeat yourself. So write code once. So instead of having like 27 different calls to get option littered throughout you know, 17 different code files, put it in one place. and make a method for it. This is just so much nicer to read throughout your code instead of this, that long get option with a get cast to int that you have to remember to do every single time. If you just have get I, this get ID, arrow get ID, it's a lot nicer to read. Um, it also lets you do things like if you want to change how that option is stored, uh, so maybe it starts out as a standalone option like this, but then it moves into a sub key of like an array of options as, as your plugin gets more functionality. That's easy to do. There's one place to change it instead of 17 or 27, whatever. Um, and then it gives you one place where the sanitization is happening, when you can control what that value is as it goes in or out of the database. I think you should create methods for everything. Um, not only is this good for your sanity while coding, it just limits the number of places where you could compromise your security. Uh, I do a lot of code review, and I can't tell you how many times I'm auditing someone's code, and nine times it's perfect. They apply all the functions of sanitization properly. The escaping is, is correct. And the tenth time, they miss it. And there's your hole. It just, you just need a tiny crack to get in. For example, if your code looks like this, it's really easy to make a mistake like I did on the third line, forgot to run escape attribute. Instead, I could write something like this. So here's a uh, method for text input, and I supply the, the name of the setting, and it runs escape attribute, guts the option, escape attribute on that, prints it out. So no matter how many of these I add to my code, I'm not going to introduce a security hole. I've already taken care of it in one place. And it's just, uh, it lowers the risk of introducing new code. So escaping. Uh, escaping data is something that you should do according to the context that it's being used in. So the WordPress security functions are named in, in a very helpful way uh, according to their context. So for example, you're probably familiar with these ones. Escape HTML, when you're between HTML tags, attributes for within HTML attributes, and URL for within 
URL-based attributes like uh, source or href. And for SQL queries, you should, uh, you should use uh, prepare to uh, sanitize your, uh, or to escape your queries. Uh, well, first of all, you should probably be using WordPress uh, API functions. But if you need to do something with a database that's not supported, use prepare. Um, and this allows you to pass in your data as separately from the query uh, so you don't run into problems. So now uh, the, whatever is in that name variable gets stuck where that uh, uh, percent %s character is. And of course, what should we do with this? should make a method out of it. One, people, uh, one mistake people make when uh, escaping their data is doing it far too early. So on line 100, they're printing out an input or something, and then they escape the, the values that are getting uh, uh, output there at line 5. And this is problematic because you might not know the context that you're going to use the data in until you're about to use it. You might want to use it in multiple contexts, so you may have escaped it in the wrong format. And it's also, um, it's also hard to audit your code when the escaping, hap uh, escaping happens far removed from the usage. So when you see that uh, output, you're going to say, OK, wait, is this escaped? Did I escape this earlier? You know, lots of scrolling. OK, here I did it 100 lines earlier. So it's much better to do it right as or right before you output that data. Next, you should update everything. Uh, WordPress, your plugins, your web server, uh, PHP, your local operating system. Um, it doesn't matter how secure your WordPress code is if the, the platform that it's running on or the platform they're using to access it isn't secure. You have a, you have a security hole at a lower level. You also shouldn't trust your ISP uh, or the people on your local network. Uh, SSL can keep your browser server communication secure. And in 2016, and I would argue, uh, or 2017 as well as last year, there, there's no excuse for, for not having this. Uh, thanks to the good work of the people at Let's Encrypt, everyone can get a, uh, an SSL certificate free of charge, um, often you know, auto-updated. And so you don't have to budget that separately. Uh, and if you're using one of the web hosts, like one of the fine sponsors of this event, a lot of them are just going to give this to you free of charge as, as part of your hosting service. Um, so sometimes you have to opt into that. I definitely recommend that, at least for securing the WordPress admin. And this one's interesting. Um, so I'm a little bit conflicted on this, because it's definitely a good idea that WordPress is self-updating. Uh, because you know, if an exploit comes out, we can update and push that out to, to millions of WordPress installs. Uh, but it also is a bit of a security issue if WordPress can write, update its own files. You might have an issue where uh, a plugin exploit uh, allows code to be written, and someone can write out a PHP shell to your server and then access it and get ongoing access. So if you know that you're going to be quickly updating your site, and if you're managing sites for clients, and you're on top of this with something like Manage WP, where you know, like, OK, these sites are out of date, uh, it can make sense to have the WordPress files not server writable uh, by the server user. And uh, it might make sense for you to use a deploy system to, to update those files. Of course, there's one directory on your server that, that pretty much has to be server writable, and that's the uploads folder, so that WordPress can write out JPEGs when you upload them. So if, if, um, if I were writing a code vulnerability, that's the first place I would try and write like a PHP uh, shell is to that uploads directory, because I'm pretty much assured that it's going to be writable. So one uh, in-depth defense trick you can use is to disable execution in this directory. So you could have something like this in uh, an htaccess file in the uploads directory. Um, of course, you want to make sure that that file is not server writable. Otherwise, they can just delete it. And here's how to do it on Nginx, saying anything in the uh, uploads directory that ends in .php, just deny it. So this, this, this won't prevent them from, uh, like if someone gets access to upload files, PHP files somehow through an exploit, 
uh, they could still do it, but then they can't access that file uh, through the browser and use it as a PHP shell. So it essentially becomes inert. Uh, using Git can be a good way to verify that all your files are as expected and have not been modified. Um, so like if you did a git diff, any file modifications would show up. This also lets you know if they say some other developer is cowboy coding and directly editing files on the server, which they shouldn't be doing. Um, and it's, it, a deploy script for this is, could be a simple two-line affair where you just git fetch to get the newest code and git reset hard to your origin master. And of course, if you're using git checkout, you don't want people to be able to access this git uh, .git data directory uh, over the web, so you're going to use a, same, a similar trick to, uh, to like, say, block all dot .files or here block .git and .svn directories. So, uh, but let's, let's apply our security mindset to um, an even deeper level. Uh, having production credentials in your repository is a bad idea. I see a, a lot of people, a lot of clients do this, where I go to check out their site, and there's, there are the database passwords. So I go to run this locally, and it's trying to connect to the production database. And um, it's bad because, first of all, anyone who has access to your repository has those credentials, and you might not want them to have it. Um, you also want to limit like, the ways that someone could get those credentials. And there will, become, there, there, there will come a day, if you have production credentials uh, distributed like this, that someone sets up a local development environment and then deletes your production database. I don't know, did anyone see that uh, thread on Reddit where someone's first day, they set up a production environment and deleted everything? Yeah, sad day. So you can check in a WP config file, but I would just keep those database credentials out of it and have like a separate file that is ignored by Git, like dbconfig.php, um, and then just have that sit on the, on the server not checked in. So this is something I debated uh, including in this talk because it seems so basic. We've, we're all professional developers here. Certainly we all use strong, unique passwords, right? Yeah. We don't. Not, not every time, not as much as we should. So I came up with this acronym for choosing a good password, and it stands for uh, complex, long, unique, and enigmatic. Uh, actually, the first version was uh, I used, for the E, I used esoteric, which proved to be too esoteric a word. I confused people. <laughs> so uh, complex. So you should use, uh, you know, alpha characters, uh, symbols, numeric. Should be long, and when I say long, I mean like longer than 16 characters. A lot of my passwords are in the you know, 30 to 50 character range. Uh, you should, unique. You should never be reusing passwords across sites because as soon as one gets compromised, then uh, they can use that to gain access to other uh, accounts. And enigmatic. Um, so like no personal information, nothing that can be uh, tied to you that people could really guess. Um, I was thinking about showing you some examples of secure passwords, but has anyone ever seen this uh, XKCD comic? Pretty popular uh, one about advice about uh, you know, how there's, there's more uh, uh, entropy in a password like this than like an eight character random garbled characters password. So the problem with this is that I actually had a sysadmin set up an account for me and use this exact password. <laughs> Not very unique. <laughs> so I'm not going to show you examples. And, but really, you shouldn't be creating your own passwords in your brain. You should be using a password manager. So something like 1Password or, or LastPass can generate great passwords, super long, uh, super complex, um, for all of your accounts. And you never even have to know what they are. Uh, so when your boyfriend or girlfriend is like, hey, what's your Facebook password? You can say, I don't know. And then when they break up with you, you can blame me. <laughs> So uh, let's review. And as, as we do, I'd like you to start thinking about uh, the questions you'd like to ask so that we don't have that awkward minute of silence where I ask you if, if there are any questions and there are crickets. So start thinking. So security mindset. I want you to remember that uh, security is a process, not a destination. Integrate it into every step of the development process. Ask yourself, how could this go wrong? How could data be misused? How could it be transformed? 
uh, trust no one, Every, assume everyone's going to abuse their power, accept that the data you get is going to be wrong or malicious. Uh, use sanitization and escaping uh, to prevent bad, bad data from causing security issues. Validate the intent so no one can trick your users into doing something they don't mean to do. And keep everything updated, every piece of software on the server and on your local machine. And when you're coding, distrust yourself. Set things up so that you have to work really hard to introduce a security issue. And create methods for everything so that your code is clean and you minimize those danger zones uh, where you need to escape or sanitize data. And one last thing before I open it up. Um, when you're done working for the day, forget everything I said, because all this is great for security, but you don't want to be this person. Right? <laughs> So uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Now, we have time for maybe two or three questions at the very most. What we'd like to do this time is have people queuing up at the uh, mic stands that are dotted around here, 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 and here. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Mark? If you make your way to a stand, please. See, even with warning, we have the awkward silence. <laughs> or maybe you're all good. Yeah, we have a question coming down below. Thank you. I guess you hear this a lot, but why is uh, WordPress still supporting PHP 5.2? <laughs> yeah, why is WordPress still run PHP 5.2? Um, because there are still people using it. Um, does anyone have the, the latest stat? Uh, the stats are public. I'm, I'm sure there's like a Nason here who knows it off the top of his head. <laughs> Seven? Seven. OK, so that's, that's getting, I think, about to the point where we drop PHP 4 support. I think it was somewhere in that range. Uh, so I think we'll be doing that soon. Of course, we're going to be updating the minimum requirement to 5.3, which, of course, is also woefully outdated. Uh, but the reason is because people are still, are still using it, um, and we don't want to break their sites. Um, and there's always a trade-off. You know, do we want to uh, make the hard decision? And eventually, we do. Um, but we don't want to be, you know, I think Matt said it once, you know, 15% uh, of our user base is like the population, population of a major city. That's a lot of people to be uh, just uh, kind of turning out the lights for. Uh, we have a question, Don. We also, we also work with web hosts to encourage them to have the latest version. So we are proactive in that sense. Absolutely. Question down here, please. Hello. Uh, I've got a question about uh, security in distributed code, like, uh, are, are all the releases signed by someone with GPG, or are, are all the updates signed? Like, why should I blindly trust someone if that's not signed? Uh, yeah, SSL uh, definitely helps with that, uh, but it's, it's not a complete solution. And there is an ongoing debate um, because of our, uh, you know, our minimum version of PHP. There are certain things that we I am talking about uh, like like signing Git uh, tags or subversion tags. So I know that that's what you release, not what my ISP is actually giving me. Right. Um, so you're talking like for updating WordPress itself, or just like when you're working with your own repo? Uh, yeah, with your own repo, especially because it is open source. So. Yeah. Uh, so like Git itself has way to to sign commits and sign tags. And are you guys doing that? Yeah. OK. That's, that, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's geeky, but again, like, you're just putting up, up hurdles. And the more hurdles you put up, put up you know, you're, you're just not going to be the, the, the person that uh, a hacker comes after. They're, they're generally looking for the easy targets, unless you're you know, o overly political or, or something like that, where they're targeting you specifically. We're going to take one more question, and you're all going to sit very nicely until I dismiss you, OK? <laughs> Charlie. Hi. Um, there are a lot of WordPress security plugins out there. Um, most of them are pretty terrible, in my opinion. What, what plugins would you recommend to use, and which ones would you recommend to avoid? For uh, plugins in general or for security? For security, WordPress plugins, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, uh, what's it called, the iThemes one. Aaron, where are you? iThemes security, I -themes security uh, is a good one. I've, I've, I helped uh, Aaron in years past look over that, look over their feature set. Um, uh, Security, I recommend their uh, was it web application firewall. 
uh, which is like sort of like Cloudflare on steroids, where it can you know, cache data, but also protect against exploits at their level before things even hit your server. Uh, those are good. Um, there's the, the Jetpack one. Root protect? Jetpack. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jetpack has, has, a, has one as well. Um, uh, those are good. I recommend those. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd also recommend having two-factor authentication as well. As a, uh, can you lean in a little bit more? Can, sorry. Uh, when you're managing a big net network of sites, having uh, two-factor authentication is really important as well, because that yes. stops a lot of brute forcing on the ad, WP admin. Absolutely. Great. Well, folks, thank you very much. Can we please all thank Mark Jaquith? Stay here. Stay here.